check one, two. Yes, I'm on. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. I'm glad you guys are all here. Um, I just have a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we do have a certificate for one of our students who um, passed one of our classes who hasn't been here in a little while, but she uh, is here today. And back in November or September, there was a financial freedom class in Mary Reynolds. I have your certificate here. So come on up real quick. Just come on up. We want to acknowledge you for taking that class. And the best way to really put yourself into this consciousness is taking a class. Thank you. Thank you. That's for you. Let's hear it for her. So one of the, the basic classes is foundations, which is the prerequisite for our teaching. It's kind of like the 101 class, and we're going to be teaching that coming up in April, I believe. So stay tuned. So... This is a prayer request form, and these are still what we use for prayer requests. And this is our Care Angel new form, yay, that we're rolling out today. And this you can use for prayer requests too. But this is more for, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be going into the hospital for a procedure, and I'd really like somebody to even come visit me. And you would fill this one out, which would include prayer and a visitation. Or say you need some assistance at your house with some little thing. This is the form it would go on. And this is, I, I'm just so excited about this because we're a family. And family helps each other. And if you need help with something, we can't help if we don't know. The most challenging thing for a minister is get a, get a call from somebody and says, I had a heart attack two weeks ago and was in the hospital. I'm feeling much better now. <laughs> I wish I would have heard so I could have gone to the hospital or done some prayer work during that time. Because that's what I do. That's that's my thing. And and you know, I can I can do back prayer, you know. <laughs> I can do back prayer and pray for you back then, but I like to pray in the moment when it's happening. So if I don't know, I can't spend time with you on the phone about prayer. So we're rolling out this new thing today and I'm I'm just so excited. The team um, has met for several months and poured over this little poor little form. It's changed forms very, very many times because we wanted to have the right information. We tried changing the name, and that didn't go. You know, when spirit speaks, you kind of go with it, don't you? It's like, if it's supposed to be a certain way, it will be that way. And if it's not supposed to be that way, it won't be. <laughs> so we have this brand new box. Look at this box. Isn't this beautiful? Isn't that the Care Angel box? So you just tear off that side of the form, and then you'd open the box and put it inside. And I just wanted to introduce you all to the box. This is my, this is my, our Care Angel box. So utilize it. And again, on that back table will still be the prayer request box. And if you mess them up and put one in the other, it's okay. We'll figure it out back there. It's all right. It's not a big deal. But this is strictly for prayer requests. Now, the prayer requests that land on this form will still go to the practitioners because the practitioners are part of the Care Angel team. But not the practitioners don't have the duty of like going to change a light bulb at your house. That will be given to someone else because they don't have to serve at that level unless they choose to. Just so you know the difference. This is for really doing the hands and feet of caring for each other in this community. So that said, that's our Care Angel experience. But again, we can't help you if you don't let us know. You know, just a call or a text or an email to me saying, hey, I'm going in for a procedure or my mom had a heart attack or whatever it is, we can then activate the prayer tree, which all of a sudden this group of powerful prayers start affirming for you the healing. You know, the healing starts the minute that you activate the desire for the prayer. You know, people have put prayer requests in that box 
and for some reason, let's say the practitioner didn't pick them up right away, and maybe Monday we picked them up, and I got a call that morning saying, thanks for praying for me. We didn't pray yet. <laughs> but your activating the desire for prayer started the healing. All you have to do is be available for, for healing and say, you know what? I know there's a power greater than me that can do this. And it, that's what activates it. And then when the practitioners start to surround it with their prayers, it takes on an even bigger energetic. That's how prayer works. It's so funny getting a call. Thanks for praying for me, and I didn't do anything. I'm always praying for everybody anyway, but I didn't specifically do something because it didn't need it. Somebody will put a prayer request in that box and not put their name on it. God knows who it is. I don't I even have to know. Because God is everything, everywhere, all at the same time. Which leads me to my talk this morning. <laughs> this theme for this month is self-awareness is not enough. It's not enough to know that these principles exist. It's a good start, but you have to, have to activate them. You have to step into your own spirituality. Now, last week we talked about religion. <coughs> and this week we're talking about spirituality. What is spirituality? Well, there are as many types of spirituality as there are religion. Actually, there's more. Because spirituality is individualized as every single individual. Everybody has their own brand. Everybody has their own way of experiencing it. But there's only one truth. But we get to express it in the trillions of ways we think. We all think differently. And if it's done unto us as we believe, as, that little word, as we believe, do you believe in the power that can move mountains? You know, when I heard that, the power that moved mountains, you know, as a kid, I was like, how is that mountain going to actually move physically? And then as I grew up and I had mountains in my life that weren't physical, they were mental mountains, I understood how mountains could move. Some challenge I had that was a huge mountain in my life, as I started to think differently about it, that mountain moved. Something happened where it dissolved in a way that it wasn't so heavy on my shoulders. The mountain was moved. So there is a difference between religion and spirituality. Religion is a prescribed set of rules that must be followed. Spirituality is that state of consciousness. That state of consciousness where you just feel. Hmm. Do you feel it? Religion says, I have a certain shoebox that God lives in and if you believe like I believe, you can be in my religion. You can be in my club. We don't work that way here. We believe that there is no box to put God in. Because there's not a spot where God is not. That means the spot that you're sitting in right now is a God spot. You are a God spot. Or... God shot, however you want. <laughs> I love God shots where all of a sudden something hits you and you go, oh, that was a total God shot. Like, <laughs> I had no idea. And something happened. Something moved. And all of a sudden, I don't even know how it worked, but something became in alignment and things worked. Things worked. So, Spirituality, the definition, is the quality of being concerned with the human spirit or soul as opposed to only material or physical things. 
Spirituality uses, utilizes the qualities of spirit, such as peace of mind, joy, love, that shows up in our lives, even in the face of our own humanity and in spite of appearances to the contrary. Spirituality, see, is a constant. It's just not something you go on Sunday and it happens to you in a church. You're probably here because you felt something outside of here that drew you in to wanting to know more about how you can experience this all the time. Isn't this what you want to experience all the time? I mean, and, and hey, you know, it's, let me tell you, it's, that's why I became a minister. Because <laughs> I, get, I, I get to do it all the time. This is my vocation. I love this vocation. It's not for everyone, though. It's, it's, uh, it's an interesting experience to decide to have this be your so-called work. Because I believe that you are all ministers. Aren't you? Aren't you the minister of your life? Don't you take that same spirituality into everything you do? And when you do, stand back. Because I don't know how powerful this thing can get. There is no limit to the power. So to me, spirituality is common goodness. It's that, of course, of course we're going to help. Of course it's going to heal. Of course there's a way. Knowing that there is a way and finding that way and allowing that way to become you, not standing in the way. As Emerson says, Get your bloated nothingness out of the way <laughs> so the divine circuits can flow. Man, my bloated nothingness so loves to get in the way of myself. It's like, brr, brr, let me stop this good stuff from happening. It's like, what am I doing? Why do I do that? You know, it's just part of me. Human kindness, natural truth, brotherly, sisterly love. To be spiritual is to be normal. And normal is just a setting on your dryer. <laughs> there is no normal, right? I mean, what's normal? Spirituality is the consciousness that comes through when we are and know that we are God in form. We are God in form. Do you believe that every cell of your being is the expression of the infinite trying to get to know itself? It's so interesting when I think about that there's this power, there's this, there's this energy that is all one. And it, they call the Big Bang or the explosion or something happened and it, it, it shattered into trillions of little pieces billions of us and as these little bits and pieces have their own consciousness that is part of the one we are have that in, innate feeling to come back together as one to explode into billions to come back together as one to explode we're kind of a breathing system we're getting we're going out on our own adventures to get to know ourselves and after this plane of existence is done, we come back together as one. And then we go out and venture again, if you believe in that sort of thing. I don't think this is the only life that we've had, but that's a whole other talk. When I, I first began exploring the difference between religion and spirituality, anything that worships something outside of myself made no sense to me. God was out there. You know, if, if, if we saw Jesus, Jesus the Christ, someone who aligned themselves with the Christ consciousness is pointing at the moon, the power. And we worship the hand that's pointing at the power. That doesn't make sense to me. It's just, I had to question, why are we, why are we spending so much time on the messenger and not the message? That was just my experience. 
Not that there's anything wrong with that. I just noticed, for me, why did I believe what I believe? You know, it's like, why do I like the Green Bay Packers? I had to understand that. I've never lived in Green Bay. I had to, I had to, when I got in this teaching, I had to find out. Why do I love the Green Bay Packers? Well, I traced it back to my friend down the street, Stevie Gruber, five years old. He was from Wisconsin. He loved the Green Bay Packers, and he was my best friend. So that's why I love the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> now, I still love the Green Bay Packers, but I know why I love them now. It's like, why are you, why do you love the colors that you like? Does it make you feel good, or was that given to you? Well, boys like pink, or blue. <laughs> Girls like pink. But then we get to pick our own as time goes on. And maybe you have several. I'm all for several favorite colors, right? I like variety. So if, if I worship something outside of myself, it didn't make sense. It didn't matter if it was a god up in the sky, or the universe, or the moon, or mother nature, or a doorknob. If it was outside of myself, I somehow knew that it was fleeting impermanent and I would just it would disappoint me sooner or later I was encouraged to find a God that worked for me in the long haul and our teaching that God is everywhere present everything that is and available all the time in me as me through me is what made sense to me coupled with a consistent practice of introspection and community, I feel that presence of God in me most of the time. It's a wonderful way to live. Do I get it 100% of the time? Even as a minister? No. No. But I'm reminded very quickly when I slip or I forget how easy it is to forget. So, if you get nothing out of this talk today, I want you to remember this one-liner. Religion is for people who don't want to go to hell. <laughs> Spirituality is for people who've been there. Right? Right? Religion is for people who don't want to go to hell. And spirituality is for people who've been there. I've been there. I got double prints and a t-shirt. I got a tattoo. And when you're walking through hell, don't take pictures. There's, don't build a condo there. Don't pitch a tent and hang out for weeks at a time. Keep walking, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. I shall keep walking. My rod and my staff, they comfort me. My knowledge, my word, and my belief, they comfort me. They lead me back to myself. And if you're on that path of leading yourself back to yourself, you'll never go wrong. If the only prayer you can pray is, there is a power, and I am part of that power. It's the first two steps of treatment. That's all you need to know. That there is something that is causing the sun to shine and crashing the waves on the beach. And I'm not doing it, but I'm a part of it. And then put your desires into that same knowledge, that same law. What if you knew that your dreams and your hopes and your visions were already done? Already done. You didn't have to figure out how they were gonna happen. That's none of your business anyway. I mean, you've got to figure some things out, but you don't have to figure everything out. Some things you have to turn over to the infinite, and the infinite is waiting for you to do that. Waiting in quiet repose for you to say, okay, you know, it's the last thing we do, right? You know, I'll, talk, I'll call a friend about a challenge I had, and they'll say, did you pray about it? I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Let me call you right back. <laughs> You know, it's like the last thing we do, because if it was the first thing we do, we wouldn't have to call anybody, right? <laughs> but it's okay that it's the last thing we do, as long as we get to it. We eventually have to pray. 
And sometimes situations force us into that experience of it's a wonderful life when George Bailey is at the bar and he's sitting there with his head in his hands. He says, God, I'm not a praying man, but if you're there, please help me. We've all felt that. That's probably why we're in this room. <laughs> we had a sensation that something greater than ourselves came forward and filled the gap. And something happened. A connection was made. A Something miraculous happens. And we go, oh, I could have had a V8. I could have prayed. I could have prayed about it. Right? So remember that religion seems to be about rules or dogma or moral codes or behavior that has been prescribed by someone else. And I'm not, I'm not bashing anybody's religion. Whatever, whatever got, gets you to experience whatever it is, there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with any religion. It's when it's used in a way that is not spiritual that I have a challenge with it. Why are religions warring against each other? Where's the godliness in that? I just don't get that. Spirituality is more about our relationship with the spirit within each one of us and every one of us. Nurture and strengthen that relationship and there is no hell in your life. The minute you are presented with a challenge and it comes up before you. Rather than going to how bad it can get, which is the normal default for human consciousness for whatever reason, I'm really good at that, I was, and now I'm really good at going, what's the best that can happen? What if this was solved? What would I feel like? And there's, there is, in feeling, is the miraculous energy of healing. Because when you feel something, the energy of spirituality rushes in and fills it up. You ever have that experience where you just knew everything was going to be okay? And there was no outer signs that it was, but you just knew in your heart of hearts that something had moved. That's where spirituality lives. And that's where I, and I bet a lot of you, want to live your whole life in the center of spirituality. I just want to be in the middle of the herd. I just, you know, I don't want to be on the fringes. I don't want to be questioning. I don't want to be sitting on the fence. There's, there's a purpose at times for good speculation. I want to know why I know why. Sometimes it's okay not to know. Can you be okay in the mystery? Can you be okay in the not knowing of how it's going to figure itself out? And one of my favorite prayers is this. I have no idea how God is going to figure this thing out, but it's not mine to do. This too is good. This too is God. And I demand to see the blessing in this right here and right now. And then walk on your way. Knowing it's done. Whew. Feels good. Because you just said, I believe in something else. It's, it doesn't mean that I don't do the work. It doesn't mean I don't do what's before me to do. It means that I introduce... See, the, the power of spirituality, of spirit won't self-impose itself upon you. It won't just come in uninvited. If it could, we wouldn't need consciousness at all. We'd just know that it was going to come in when it needed to, but we have to invite it in. We have to ask it into our situation and go, hey, okay, energy of life, or whatever you choose to call it, goddess, great spirit, Christ consciousness, Jesus the Christ, come into this situation and show me what's mine to do. And then do it. And then walk on. And then walk on. 
Because if you dwell in the challenge too long, energy flows where your attention goes. It's the way the law works. Energy flows where your attention goes. And if your attention is on what's not working, the law says, absolutely, let me show you how it doesn't work. So you pray for something, not believing, and then it doesn't happen, and you go, this stuff doesn't work. When it's working, you're demonstrating perfectly because you believe it doesn't work. So let me show you how it doesn't work. You go, wow, all I have to do is change. I just have to believe. You ever pretend to believe? I mean, sometimes that's where we start. Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. Pretend that it is as though it's supposed to be. And sometimes that's all I can do. Now, don't fake yourself out and, you know, it's all good. It's all good when it's not all good. But say, you know what? It's mostly good. Maybe you, your body feels ill. If your little pinky, your little toe, if you can say, my little toe feels really good right now, <laughs> maybe that's where you start. And it only takes a thimble full of faith to start, but you've got to start something and you have to invite it in. Call it forward. Say God, or whatever you choose to call it. I am here. And we are one. And it is good. It is so good. And watch what happens. So in conclusion, listen daily to what can only be felt. Listen daily to what only can be felt. Listen with your being and feel spirit in all that you do. So it is. Ah, okay, everybody breathe, everybody breathe, yes. We're going to go into our spiritual mind treatment, scientific prayer. And um, so just close your eyes if that's comfortable for you or take a soft focus on the lovely flowers or the candles and just bring yourself to that place of knowing. So just bringing to the forefront of your consciousness whatever you choose to believe the infinite creative energy that is animating this universe is. Call it God or goddess or great spirit or divine wisdom, source energy, or whatever you want to call it. We can agree that there is something happening. And that each one of us is a divine expression of that happening. We are each a divine outpicturing of the love of the universe and its desire to know itself. I speak a word of blessing upon this group, knowing that there is love happening in this week of love of St. Valentine's Day. We are reminded that love is the venue in which we live. We live in the midst of love itself. Just as the fish lives in water, we live in love. And as we speak our word into that law, knowing that there is a healing, a revealing, and a truth that is right now coming forward in every situation, there is a miraculous energy that is activated right here and right now that moves into all of those corners, all of those places, where there may have been disbelief previously, there is now knowing. I speak a word of blessing upon anyone who has asked for prayer in any form, written or typed or verbal or perhaps in the subconscious regions of our mind where we just said, help me. I know that that power is right there and now activated in a way that makes sense that brings the healing, 
that brings the solution, that brings the answer, that brings the connection that is needed to be made for the ultimate healing of the universe. For I know that each one of us is a divine expression of that love. And as such, we have the same power of creation that it has. And we use that in our lives in a way that makes sense, that heals our life. How good it is to know. How good it is to know that that power is doing its great work all the time. And I am so thankful. I am so, so grateful. My heart overflows with the love of the universe because healing is happening. Love is happening. Something wonderful is always happening. And I claim it right here and right now with the sound of my voice saying yes, absolutely yes to spirit. So it is easy to place these words directly into that law. Into that living, loving law of God where it is manifest. And I let it do its great work. So I release this treatment into that energy knowing in advance it is already so. As we affirm together by saying, and so it is.